on the dotted line. Let's fill the doubt for your freedom ring and patriotic voices sing. Red, white, and blue, never give up. You represent America! Nothing in praying for a brighter day. I listen to my heart and I obey. How can I see it any other way? I'm looking at a life with my own eyes. Here are some exciting scenes from today's episode of Liberty's Kids. I believe in being what you want to be, not what people tell you to be. The British have begun moving back to Manhattan. We absolutely must evacuate Fort Washington. The armaments at the fort are critical to our cause. We're in a war, Joe. We're bound to lose men if you haven't the stomach for it. Get another job. Keep firing. If we can't hold this position, you won't have the Corbins to blame. Look at this! Jams! And jams! And more jams! Oh, and rock candy! Moses and I will stop while you're in France! <laughs> Those sweets are to ease the discomfort of a long voyage. If you try to ship out with our peach jam, You'll have to get past me first. Congress won't be happy if you delay their most important statesman. They would understand if they knew how good this jam tastes. You're probably right. But they have asked Dr. Franklin to try to enlist France in the American cause. Right now, we Americans stand alone in the world. We must acquire allies or the revolution is doomed. Promise me he'll bring back some French pastries. I'm worried about him. After his last voyage, he swore he'd never cross the Atlantic again. Seventy is very, very old. At his age and in his health, who knows if he'll survive the trip? There! from? Sarah and James, would you like to read it, Henri? I couldn't possibly read through the tears in my eyes. Tears from seeing all this food for the last time. I hope it's good news. If I'm to convince France to help us, we have to show that we can gain a victory against the British on our own. Hmm. What's wrong? Washington is retreating from Manhattan. Dear Mother, please forgive the irritable nature of my letter, but I'm tired and thirsty. Oh, oh. And the men in these colonies suffer from a decided lack of gallantry. In addition, since I'm not a man, General Washington told me I couldn't stay at the front lines. He sent me to a place called Fort Trial. Here! It can't be much of a fort, as I'm about to join a group of camp followers, women and children who live here with their soldiers. <laughs> I'd certainly rather be viewing the action with the General and James than be here watching people wash clothes. Thank you, sir. <laughs> nice little stroll, huh? Huh? <laughs> I'm Margaret Corbin. My friends call me Molly. Who are you? Thank you. I'm Sarah Phillips. It's good. Of course it is. The dirt from the river adds flavor. Oh. <laughs> I've been General Washington's secretary for months now, and I've never seen him so discouraged. All we need is a victory, and I know the general will deliver it. He's the most decisive, commanding man I've ever met. Lieutenant Harrison, I need you now. Commanding is right. English is not even my language. This I talk funny, and I can't learn to read. 
Who says this? Us up, boys. Let me tell you something, Henri. It's a credo I live by. Be what you want to be. Not what people tell you you can be. Well, then stop telling me I can be a reader. What I want to be is left alone. You owe it to yourself to hone your reading, writing, and arithmetic. I'm doing just fine without it. Yes, you've done well so far. You've learned a trade at a second language, and I'd like to help you keep learning. Why? For one thing, if you could improve your skills at estimation, we might not be short logs for the fire, and we wouldn't both be freezing our toes off. At least we're not outside. Do you think Sarah and James are all right out in the wilderness? Rosemary, stop wiping your nose on my dress. <laughs> Ouch! This is ridiculous. I'm out in the middle of Fort Nowhere fishing for trousers. You're not the only one who didn't want to come here. Oh, <laughs> hello, Molly. After my husband John enlisted, he was about to leave our place in Pennsylvania. Know what it's like to be a woman living alone in the wilderness? I'm sure I don't. In that wild country, I wouldn't even have been able to feed myself. Hey, Maul, what's for supper? Some kind of shirt soup? Better than raw squirrel or whatever it is you got stuck in your beard. <laughs> ah, you leg puller, raw squirrel. Probably raccoon. It's amazing the way you keep your optimism in a place like this. Dearie, when I was five, my daddy was killed and my mama kidnapped. I never saw her again. If that didn't ruin my life, I'm sure not gonna let this do it. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your friend, Ma? Sarah, she's English. Well, we won't hold that against her. This is John. He's a matras. Cleans and loads the cannons. I'm mighty proud of him. One reason I don't mind working so hard. We can't have the man loading the cannon wear dirty drawers, can we? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of cannons are they? Pennsylvania six-pounders, right up there on the brow of that hill. We protect the northern approach to Fort Washington. And those beauties will make things plenty tough on the lobster backs. I beg your pardon for the slight, Sarah. Never mind. I quite understand. Ignore him. John just doesn't like red. Sure am lucky he married me. Don't let her fool you, Sarah. I'm lucky she married me. It's not like I had lots of choices. It was either him or Squirrel Beard over there. It's Raccoon! <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Franklin, the only thing you'll catch with a line that thick is influenza. <laughs> I think I've already got that. Actually, at the other end of the line is a thermometer to measure the water temperature. Now save you the trouble. It's cold. I study the ocean currents and temperatures every time I cross the Atlantic. It was these studies that helped me chart the Gulf Stream seven years ago. Just don't let your studies interfere with your health. It's my job to get you to France alive. How are you feeling? I'm not sleeping well in these rough seas, and the food, particularly the salt beef, is tough on 70-year-old teeth. But the fresh air seems to do me some good. However, I'd prefer to avoid the frequent baths. Gentlemen, I have surprising news. The British have begun moving back to Manhattan. I suspect they're mobilizing to attack Fort Washington. Our last stronghold in Manhattan. It houses some of our finest troops and a large amount of our armaments and ammunition. This fort and its outposts are critically important to the war for both sides. Sarah's at one of those outposts. Yes, your friend who wanted to see action is about to get her wish.
Ready to fire! Molly, how brave you are! She's the best artillery mate in the whole regiment. I can't believe you're permitted to do such a thing. I don't ask permission to do nothing. I believe in being what you want to be, not what people tell you to be. I know someone else who shares your point of view. I can't read the recipe. I'm starved to death. <gasps> who is there? Henri? Moses, is that you? What's wrong, lad? Nothing's wrong. Come on, son, tell me. When you didn't come back, I tried to make dinner from the notes you left me, but I couldn't measure. Oh, you're teasing me now. And there's lots of words I don't understand. Hey, you're the one who's teasing me. Oh, you were late on purpose. You knew I wouldn't be able to make myself food. I could have starved. Somehow, I think you wouldn't have starved. But reading and measuring are important things to know. Have you changed your mind about learning them? Yes. Even if other fellows don't think I can. But not right away. Why not? Because I'm too hungry! First, a late supper. Then, a late lesson. <laughs> absolutely must evacuate Fort Washington. The armaments at the fort are critical to our cause. America has no munitions factories. We've no way to replace the guns and ammunition if they're captured. General Washington, I strongly disagree with Colonel Reed. I'm confident we can hold the fort. If we can hold it, we should hold it. Sir, General Green would risk over 2,000 of our finest troops. We've already lost too many to disease and desertion. I don't have the stomach to lose any more. We're in a war, Joe. We're bound to lose men if you haven't the stomach for it. Get another job. I stand by my recommendation to hold the fort. General Green's right. We must fight. Um, excuse me. Sirs. Sir, this hesitation to evacuate is nothing short of reckless. Forgive me, but you must make up your mind. It's only November. How much colder does it get here? Much. That's why when John's tour of duty's up, we're moving south. Then we'll start a family. Oh, how many children do you want? Mm, I don't know, eight, ten. Oh my. John's a good man. He'll make a fine father. Probably a tired one too. <laughs> I miss my family terribly, but being around people like you makes my stay here so much easier. Here now, I'll make it easier still. I like to press the summer flowers. They always add a bit of cheer when winter comes knocking. It still has its perfume. General Washington, sir, we need a decision now. Do we abandon Fort Washington or do we defend it? General Green, as you are the officer most familiar with the situation, I leave it to you to give such orders as to defending Mount Washington as you judge best. I appreciate your confidence in me, sir. So, General Howe demands that I surrender this fort over to you British. Please repeat the following to your commander. Give me leave to assure His Excellency that, inspired by the most glorious cause that mankind ever fought in, I am determined to defend this post to the last man. Expect nothing else from a soldier of Colonel McGaw's reputation. That will be all.
gentlemen, I am resolved to crush the rebels into dust. Even a single victory could give their so-called revolution momentum on the battlefield as well as support from foreign shores, especially France. Look at all the redcoats. They're preparing for an attack. And we won't have long to wait either. See there? Hessian troops to the north. Hessian mercenaries. I can't believe the king is paying Germans to come here and kill British colonists. Washington's not going to evacuate the fort after all, is he? He's worried that it may not be as strong as we think. He wants to inspect it in person. Why does he keep changing his mind? The British have begun their attack! Like it or not, we have lost our opportunity to evacuate the fort. With a six-pounder, we might be able to hold off the Hessians. But not the King's Navy! Tryon has fallen. There's nothing we can do for those poor souls. Please let Sarah be all right. General! They're raising the Union Jack over Fort Washington! That's it, then. General Howe has prevailed. This is a most unfortunate affair and has given me great mortification as we have lost not only 2,000 men, but a good deal of artillery and some of the best arms we had. Sir, the men panicked. I did not account for the possibility if we had but held the perimeter. No, sir. We should have abandoned the fort as General Lee and I urged. Gentlemen, please. I alone am to blame. I've never seen him look so disappointed, so helpless. He is in danger of becoming a parody of a general. I pray Colonel Reed is wrong. What happened to Fort Tryon? To Sarah? Women and children will be returned to us. This may be war, James, but there are rules. What's that? I think it's... Yes, it is! The camp followers from Fort Tryon! You're safe. 
Yes, I'm safe. Continue the fight after this. It's hopeless. Nothing's hopeless. Not when people like Molly fight on when all seems lost. If all the colonists display her spirit, America will be very difficult to defeat. Will your friend be all right? Yes. You can't keep the Corbins down. I learned an important lesson today, Mr. Harrison. As much as I respect my generals and consider them my family, never again will I make a decision that goes against my own instincts. A disaster like this battle must never happen again. We must prevail in our fight for freedom. We will prevail in our fight for freedom. Maybe with the spirit of George Washington. And Captain Molly, and Ben Franklin, and so many others. All isn't lost after all. Yeah.